global. I'm here today is to just share with you the learning journey that I have actually gone through. It may not be relevant, but I believe that it will spark some ideas on how to transform from something or from nothing to something and enhance it like what our last speaker mentioned. Now, if we can enhance it, this is how we can sustain our establishment, our movements. Okay. I run Snow City Singapore for the last 14 years. I'm a hotelier. I've been working abroad in Indonesia. I was seconded by the governments to work for the Indonesian corporations as part of the business venture by, by the Singapore governments. And that's where I learned a lot of things, whereby we learned about diversity. Today I'm here, I'm wearing this called the Baju Melayu or Baju Korong. It's to, it's to show the identity. And this is what I call innovation because it makes you outstanding. No one's wearing Baju Korong here today, except me. Okay? And this is called diversity. Yeah? So, I'm happy to be here, even though I have a very rush and tight schedule. I just landed yesterday midnight. And after this, I have to go back to the airport and go back to Singapore. Yeah, because by, by 8 to, to 9, I have another session that I need to discuss with my business partner. Okay, the content of my discussion today, or sharing, will be talking about Snow City is very much... Uh, okay, move over. Yes. Okay, Snow City is the only place. We are very small. We call ourselves an attraction. We are the family of the Science Centre Singapore. So the question, why having Snow City? This is where I will explain to you. It's an opportunity. Where there are opportunities, this is where you need to strike. You can be an outstanding, or people might say, under the sun you have snow. That's what happened when I went over to China when I was invited by the governor to be the judge for the international competition. Everybody is zooming at me, not the rest, because I came from a tropical country. So they ask me, do you have snow? I say, I do have snow, but indoor snow. We created snow. Okay? So, it's all about creativity. In, in my kind of business, okay, to sustain, first of all, you need to have passion. You can relate this in your own organizations. Without passions, it will not move you further. Okay? Now, when you deeply passion to what you're doing, as good like you fall in love with your wife, your girlfriend, you know? one hour, just like one minute to you, may not be enough. So, so you, need, you need to build passion in yourself. So when you started to have passions, that will, spur, that will spark the fire in you that you want to go further and further. So always do reflective measure to look at yourself, to look what you're doing. Now, Snow City Singapore, we do various things. I only have a chamber of about 1,500 square meters with a temperature range from minus 5, go as low as minus 10. Now, seated, situated in Singapore, whereby many of Singaporeans have not touched snow when we first created. So it's to just get them the feelings so that they do not have to travel very far. So we created snow fall experience, we created the snow fun house. When I created the snow fun house, which which give me uh, to get the Singapore Books of Record. It's all about innovations. So that's why we are here today. When we innovate things, we are one step ahead from our competitors. You optimize your resources, your logistics, and, and your strength. Now, in order to be a good innovators, yes, you cannot be selfish. You must rely on many hits, many views, right from consumer, right from the user to the consumers. Okay, next. Okay, the innovation challenges. Every day, people try to innovate. Why? Because they want to survive in the industry, be it in business, be it in charity, NGOs, we need to continue to keep on roll out new ideas. So that's where innovation is all about. Enhancing what you have. No? So, innovation will always end in failures. It's okay. 
We fail, but we can continue to run. You fail eight times, you stand. No, you fail seven times, you stand eight times. So, do not be disheartened. Do not be discouraged. If your innovation did not work, this is where you are learning to fine-tune it. So, your innovation will become successful when after you have managed to tune all those lapses, all those shortcomings, by the time when I first started, when I was in Birmingham, uh, Dr. Rob will know the place, and I saw people queuing to have uh, ice bar. Wow, so, so when I come back, I said, I have a temperature. Why not I do it the same thing? But again, culture come into place. Singaporeans do not, do, not, uh, do not experience cold. So when I try to serve, drink inside the, inside the ice bar, especially the girls, you know, after they have makeup so nice, then the nurse start watering, they run out, so the boyfriend have to chase them out. So it's not successful. Not every venture that I do is successful. I'm sharing you the real life story. But to men, they like it because why? The colder it is, the better they hold the girl. <laughs> so, innovations come in very start. This is very standard theory, the fear of making mistake. That's why we fail. Because we, we don't dare to confront and face the mistake. In life, problems will always come. Face it, don't hide, because the problem will chase you. So we have to be brave enough to venture into something. But in business, when we do things, we, have, we, have, we call risk. But it must be a calculated risk. If you fail, this is what I'm going to suffer. So every business, that's what, how we uh, determine our, our venture or our investment. So the fear of making, the biggest obstacle of innovation is the fear of making mistake failures which kill many people an original idea of innovation. So the moment you speak to your colleague or to your, to your mentor, ah, no, doesn't work. So this is not the right attitude. Attitude comes. Always be a good listener. It can be a sweeper in your organization. He might see things different from you. Pick that as an idea. Share with anybody. Then your productivity improves, okay? Uh, your movements will have more creativities. Secondly, we're talking about cognitive impairment. This is everybody have. That's why I said you cannot stop your colleagues, your peers from their great ideas. Every idea is great. Nothing is not great. But once you put in order, it becomes super. Because we must be able to materialize that ideas. Okay. Example like in Snow City, I share with you. I just have square box building, people call ref, 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 no refrigerators because it's always keep cold thing inside. But how can I optimize? I've been paying for 24 hours on the utility cost. So what I did, I do dining in the snow. I do, people are dining in the snow. No, you cannot have, have that kind of experience. I try to create uniqueness, always uniqueness make you outstanding. And you have story. Remember, anything you do, there must be content of your story. So people want to have that experience. I do even wedding in a uh, winter wedding. Solemnization, even though the justice of peace was shivering. But why the boy, no, the men feel good, no? no? Because the first time they got solemnized, no? No, in the snow. Now, then I look at the corner space which is not being utilized. Then I call an investor. Come, build a rock wall. I try to reach out to the teenagers so that they come, so that they can come and do more active, active sport. Then I open up ski school to introduce it as a culture, sport culture. Then I create a, a restaurant, a microbrewery restaurant. Now to create a novelty. So when people come, sometimes you must understand, when the person comes, the mother will always say that my, only my children will play. Then what happened to the father? The father can go up to the restaurant. What about the brothers who is mature enough might not find interesting to play in the store? They do for the climbing. Yeah. And I also look into areas like photo making. Photo making. I started, when I first came 
Into that organization, I find there are many things that is not right. A lot of uh, a lot of productivity uh, time has been wasted. The photo taking, they click every time for every half an hour, meaning that one one hour they will get probably two photos, and the revenue that they generated one year is only twenty four thousand. So. When things that is not your forte, outsource that experience. So I call a professional coming in. From 24,000 today, we make 1 million. It's all about realizing yourself that is not your core business. Give to someone else. So having said this, this is where all organizations, be it whoever you are in your establishment, you can leverage on other people's strength. No? in order to benefit from that. Instead of you getting 100%, maybe you will be taking 35%, but this person coming and put money, do everything for you, because you have the space. So this is how you can innovate you know, the opportunities. Then we're talking about structure fixation. Yeah, one of the examples they were talking about fridge, refrigeration, you know, the refrigerators, yes. I can relate on other scenarios, something that is not common, okay? Now, in, no, in, in the refrigerator example, the cooler box is, no, the, the refrigerated box is always at the top. Whatever your veggie is always at below. So they're saying, why can't we switch over? Because we often take veggie then open up the freezer. So these are the ideas, because why? It's already fixed in the mind. So in your organization, you can always come back to any of your members. It's very important, you must have a brainstormer. You must have someone, you know, a group that you need to form in your organizations that will review every of your activities, every of your movements you know, in your establishment. Are we doing right? We have to introspect. We cannot be complacent. The leaders of the organization must open up the door. Let them speak. Empower them to to relay their views, empower them to develop something, give them the moral support. In business, management is nothing without, without the employees. Everything is all done by them. But what management do is the big pictures. You need to do the big pictures. You need to assemble the puzzle. You are the protagonist. That the success of the story is done by your team, but you support you give the moral support on how to achieve this. And hidden traps. Some of the innovative ideas can make you fall. Like I said, it's very important. Calculate everything that you want to do. Do not just jump the gun. The other organization can do this, you, you also do. You are duplicating. Try always develop something not to be apple to apple. You can be the durian, no? Like in Singapore context, apple versus durian. Durian is bigger and very tasty and very smelly also, <laughs> okay? Next. <clears throat> this is an example. Like I said, the fear of making managers should give employees a relaxed meeting environment. Let them have a brainstorming. Establish this as part of your culture. The culture that will help to tune every of the members of your organization to have the same thinking that, that we are very open to ideas. And brainstorming, you no, know, is a way of how you can achieve, overcome your cognitive impairment, allowing different people to share their views. Every time when anybody walks to you, accept it. But doesn't mean that you have to implement it. But these are the people who actually come and talk to you based on what they have observed. Structure fixation, engineers, customers alike created a strong link between the products and its structures. And innovation means to break such structures. And if we use, like a hidden trap, use effective innovation, establish the proper methodologies, the methods on how to overcome the barriers. Next. Let me cite some of the cases in Snow City, how we innovate the business and we transform it. Last June, I just launched this new novelties. It's an attraction called Drift on Ice. I do not have the money, but I have network. 
I invited the business first, uh, uh, not a business organization. I shared with them how much you can make money and benefit from what I have. She put in 1 million US. And I launched it. So I leveraged on uh, the strength of this business organization who has the money, but he do not have the knowledge. So again, we have a win-win. Always, always practice a win-win formulas when you, when you work with other external organizations. Do not only win on your side, you must also care about them. Then your relationship will last longer and longer. So when we set up this, it started with a dream. Then I share my dream with my team. Then we call it how to get it done. It took me six months. Then I have this. Even until my board was asking, how did you find all these people? Networking is important. We are here today. Without this networking, we will not be strong. So I, it can come just from someone to say, hey, this guy is interested, no? Then you go and approach him. Then I rationalize with them. Of course, must have some business sense. So finally, we make it happen. I don't even come out with a single cent. I just come out with them a space. And the space also did not affect us because I increased the density by creating another level. So my current business activity continue. So this is add-on. So the revenue generating has improved by 20%. Okay? Next. <clears throat> What's the relationship between Stone City and charity organization? This is where it's a wonderful combination whereby NGOs should work with corporations, business corporations. You can develop many activities you know, and let them participate. Every organization they have their CSR, we all know, corporate social responsibility. You can use that as part of their philanthropy effort to support. Uh, in Singapore, we work with like Shell Petroleum. Uh, we bring about uh, 30,000 students. We just ask, can we have, say, about 1,000 students to be covered under them? They pay for it, and these students will come for free. Likewise, you can work the same way. This is how, this, you know, in business, there are two things. Your core business and your non-core. But in order for you to survive, you need to create an organic revenue that coming from your core business activity. Okay? So like in Snow City, when people come to Snow City, they just buy the ticket. That's my call. I'm selling the tickets. But the moment they step in, what should I do with them? It's just like a fish. No? Once you sleep, you will never return. So they go in. Yeah, you can call, you trap them. You create a lot of varieties of, uh, of organic activities whereby they will pay. They will rent gloves. No? I even zip the pocket so that they cannot put their finger. So they feel cold, they go and rent the glove. I might be sound nasty, but, but this is business. Yeah? I give them comfort. Comfort doesn't come free. So what I'm trying to share with you is all about ideas. Look surrounding you. Ask yourself, are you perfect enough? There's no perfections. Perfection is always in God. That's what I believe. We can deliver some satisfactions only. So, so try to always create by, by reviewing every day or maybe have a monthly discussion with your peers. What should we do next? Are we satisfied with what we're doing? Are we in trend with the current uh, so-called uh, business industry? Don't keep yourself backdated. Always move forward. So, all the industry can participate in the charity. This is the theme of the conference, the charity ecosystem that can be developed. I said philanthropy landscape should be composed of companies. In future, we should invite companies, corporations to come in. Let them understand us. Not only uh, NGOs that are coming. Let them have a fair share of what we've been doing. Because when we weave with them, they will understand us better. Right now, they only know us when we poach them, when we share. But let us sit here today. They can see how, 
how many noble people here who are trying to raise a life of the underprivileged. That's what we are here today. We're trying to get this fund so that we can support people who are, who are less fortunate than other people. So, we can invite poor families, orphanages to experience, to experience it. This is what we do. We create cartoon characters to just entertain them so that we have more stories. We also speak about global warming because we are in the cold, cold zone, how much it will impact the world okay, when the Arctic is melting. Then we create iconic it's good that every NGO have your own icon. That's why people will remember. So, so we created our own icon. That's what you see. That is in a very small cubicle only. But the experience, I bring the Inuits. No? It's interesting. I just, I, I just created it. I can make maybe for per event $350,000, which is good money. Next. These are all the kids. We make them happy. We created the experience when they step into. So, like, similar to you, when people come to your NGOs, give them the experience so that they will remember what you are doing. Next. A holistics, uh, holistically experienced are the biggest innovation of Snow City. Because why? We want... In attraction business, in my kind of business, what I'm selling, I'm selling experience. That's right. You can have dining in the snow, no? you can do skiing. It's an experience that may not be available in other parts of Singapore. You only need to come to my place. So for you to travel all the way to the winter country, that will be very costly. <laughs> yeah? So why not come to us? And we also created... Uh, Educations. I developed cryogenic science program. We call the enrichment. But now we even go further. We go on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths program. How the bumper car can be dismantled, how, uh, how they function, how we created snow technology behind the scene, how snow is being making. You know, uh, I even can experience them. Oh, you can have crystallized snow on the spot. I just spray a snow gun go over through the cold zone, then it drop, become a crystallized snow. You say, hey, this is snow. If you never thought about this, then it's a waste. So this is where I capitalize on every asset that I have. Why? Because I'm a commercially or profit-driven company. Even being the government-linked company, snow, snow Venture Private Limited, which the company that owns Snow City, we have belonged to the Ministry of Education. But we have zero subsidy. I'm just like an ordinary business owner that I have to sustain, able to generate revenue, to pay for the expenses. Similarly, just like yours. Your, your organizations, you need to pay for your, you know, for your key management people, even though not much, okay? You're relying on volunteers. So, so, so you must have this, uh, this sense of business knowledge being like a business owner, so that you can understand, oh, how, how, you know, how do my organization survive? Huh? We need to pay electricity. Then, then you will start realize. But if you just rely on yourself as a volunteer, you go nowhere. You just say, I want to serve God. That's why I'm here. But have a feel, because these are the real things that you need to overcome. They need to pay for the rental. They need to pay for the utilities. They need to pay for the food, for the expenses of the operations. So, simple, just like a business, except that your business focuses very much on charity and, uh, and social works. So, for us, we are purely commercial, but I, as the management rep, I need to make sure that I have money to continue to sustain and pay. So what? You have to crack your brain. So, do not be complacent that you are in a charity that you have a, uh, a very strong donor that coming in. Remember, nothing will last forever. Prepare for the next donor. Always create the next opportunity. Yep. 
always continue to to poach donor to to share your advocacy so that they will believe in you and they will continue if possible to have as many as possible not just because you have one big sugar daddy who can give you money then they say that's it we can last forever no that's not true and in Soul City, we create a lot of experience. We create by zonal. These are all for education purposes, what they see. So we have few. We have the Arctic galleries. They see about how Arctic people uh, live in summer, live in during the winter, what's the mode of transportation, you know, the food, how their housing. It's all education. It would be meaningless if you just see like that. But through the story that we develop, it's an education process that the mother will say, now you learn eh, about transportation people over in the Arctic. Yeah. I just do a simple props. The higher, no, the coldest they try to achieve in, at home, that is the icon, the higher will be the utility cost. Then we impart this knowledge to the kid. We teach them about, about how to save uh, energy. We teach them how to save uh, so-called the environment uh, recycles. I was very impressed with one of the sharer, I believe so. Uh, he was recognized yesterday. Uh, Bobby just introduced me. It's very fantastic, the 12 basket story, which is very impressive. And I really congratulate because when he told me, they just started only. But Spring didn't give them recognition. It's not, it's not just they just started. It's the model that will that will motivate others to do it. So what Spring Green does is the right thing, to recognize the good ideas, because it's a great innovation to me. Next. This is a drift on the ice, which, which we invested about 1 million USD. Next. Okay, this is a partnership that I made. With the, with the China organizations from, no, they are from China. So, how I can get it? Because of my networking. So, continue, continue to build your own network. Next. Great innovations in protecting the environment, we created this as well. How we share about, uh, about solar panel, wind turbine, okay, recycling. Next. Now, let's using philanthropy ecosystem to get things done. Okay, I'm part of the family of Spring Green. Now, I thanks to Glenda for roping me in. I hope that I can learn a lot from her, including Chairman, yeah, who has been working very hard. I can see Glenda traveling around the world, everywhere. You know, yeah, I managed to follow Glenda over to Rome together with Daniel and Sister Lynn. Yeah, it was a very good experience. One night, I touched down. Tomorrow, I go back. Yeah. Why I do this? I want to motivate my partners. I want to motivate my team that we are serious. So it's nothing else, not because I can afford it. I just do it for the sake of passion, that I appreciate what she has been doing. So that is what I'm trying to show to her, that you get the support. Yeah, it's very tiring, but it's very fun. Yeah, I touch down tomorrow, I go back to Singapore. Yeah, it might sound crazy, right? But, but this is the motivation that you're trying to nurture in your, no, in your relationship with your partners. To me, Glenda has done a lot of things. That's why I'm very proud of that. So I will not hesitate to go even in the right corner of the world. It's fine because it's all accessible. So like... like uh, Buzz Schmidt said, the obstacle and frustration of social entrepreneurs taking and online philanthropies are due to tangle web of ineffective and inconsistent practice that extend throughout the universe of philanthropy. As a result, we need to invoke these strategies, untangle the entire webs, that is, remove impediments that inhibit progress throughout the entire philanthropy ecosystem. Next. Facebook. Everybody has Facebook. Facebook is meaningless if you always read by yourself, if you own it yourself. You need to connect. Then your, your network will grow. 
it will grow. The more network and connected organization and individual change agent becomes, the more value others can get by joining your ecosystem. So make use of your Facebook. Connect it. So today we can reach people. I can reach to Daniel in Madurai. No, Daniel even know, hey, you are here in Madurai. I come and see you. It's all about connecting ourselves. Next. Okay. I can start to do some of the few Singapore charity organization innovations, what they do. This is by the Touch, uh, the Touch Community Service. Initially, they only care about the elders, but through innovations, through the support from the governments, they have expanded by caring all ages, all ages, right, from kids, teenagers, drug addicts, they take care of them. So, how they innovate, but they started only by taking care of the elders. Next. This from the Welcome to the Heart. Okay. They provide dietitians. And they work with other organizations, how they can further improve. They work with volunteers in order, before that they work with the chef, they have to pay them every day. So, they recruit volunteers. They innovate their strategies. So with the volunteers that they're providing support on this, they, they have a surplus, how they can expand their activities. And they've been doing very well. Next. This is the, these organizations, they're dealing with milks only. They provide milks. But how many organizations that have supported them? Because they share the journeys why milk is very important for children. So, what I'm trying to share with you is that there's no limits in your creativity, in your innovation ideas. Continue. Continue to do something, but you should not have any fear of doing it. Because if you have fears, that's where it will block you. It will block your progress. So, having running Snow City Singapore, as a commercial entity, I learned throughout these 14 years. Of course, no pain, no gain. Have a sleepless night, wondering how tomorrow will I get enough cash flow to sustain the business. Then continue to put effort, working hard by meeting people, sharing my visions, what I plan to do. Until today, I have a cash flow of one million at least in the bank, which I thank, thanks to God also, for giving me the courage, you know, able to lead my small team and continue to sustain the business. Okay, next. So, wishes to the ecosystem of philanthropy. I believe that with the help of the future ecosystem of philanthropy, we can apply innovative approach and take challenges to succeed in order to sustain our movements. And I hope all of you will not give up. Remember, you may fail today, but you will succeed tomorrow. So there's no stop. And with your current innovation ideas, and we will, we will have the opportunity to implement together as the ASEAN charities and work together with Spring Rain Global, uh, which I'm very thankful that this is the third conference. This is my second talk, uh, which I missed the first one because I wasn't recruited at the time. <laughs> And I hope that we can together move, move forward. Please, be connected. Create a database, share. Some donor might not, might not be interested in that country. Some donor might be interested in other countries. So by sharing this, we will benefit all our colleagues here no, to get the benefit from our networking. Okay, next. With that all, I sum up my presentation and I hope that uh, the little thoughts that I share with you uh, will benefit uh, you and wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you.